And good morning. We are live. Welcome. It's Friday morning, August 26, 2016. Let's flex those muscles. Let's get ready to rock and roll. We're talking about some uh, some real muscular type stuff here. We're talking Clock Shark. We're talking to Cliff Mitchell. And we're going to take a look at this uh, time tracking app. And I want to share the backstory for um, how I met Cliff, kind of like how I met your mother. <laughs> Richard, why are you shaking your head? There's a lot of background noise, I think. Claire, oh, I think Sarah never re -mute. No, she's muted again. No, she's muted. Okay. So I think we're all good now. Um, yeah, much better. So, you know, it's funny because lately, like in my 97 and up calls and a lot of other places that I've been sort of working with people, I've been talking a lot about uh, list building, you know, and building those lists and, and then particularly email lists, but also things I've been doing, showing people how to do like a nimble where you can identify a group of targets you know, you just sort of target people that you want to, you know, build a relationship with, you know, that you want to network with and how to kind of build those lists and then how to follow up and start to, you know, start and nurture those relationships. And one of the things I was actually talking about on yesterday's 97 and up call that we did is how, you know, for years we've all been sending out email marketing campaigns, right? And it's very common and I think a lot of people still agree it's probably the most effective way of building those relationships with people, sending out those emails. And a few years back, I noticed that Chris Morgan did something I had never seen before. And we talk about standing out and doing things that, you know, get you noticed. It's by, you do that by doing something that's different, that, that, that everybody else isn't already doing. So, yeah, everybody's already sending emails. But Chris Brogan caught my attention because he's, in, in his emails, one of the first things it always does is it encourages you to hit the reply button. And I actually hit the reply button with him thinking he's not going to respond to me. He's too big. But he actually responded to me. Now, whether it was really him writing back or some assistant of his, I couldn't say. But the dialogue, let's put it this way. I was pretty convinced that it seemed like it was really him writing back. Um, just based on the, you know, the, the sort of, uh, you know, everybody has their own sort of tone that they write in. Anyway, neither here nor there. The point I'm making is that I learned from that and I started doing that myself. I started sending out emails and in my own emails, I always encourage people to please hit the reply button. I would love to start a conversation. You know, I'd love to talk to you. I'd love to hear from you. And so I've been doing that. And July 4th, I sent out one of my emails and it was about independence and getting out of your own way. And I got a reply from Cliff and we started talking. And I noticed in his email signature that he had this product called Clock Shark. And I was curious. So I clicked over and I looked and I said, oh, it's time tracking. Oh, you know, and I looked at some videos and I was like, this is cool. And then as, as we continued to reply, we started talking more and I started learning more about Cliff and, and Cliff's product. And uh, so decided to bring Cliff onto our little show here. So Cliff, uh, with all of that said, why don't you, uh, I'll shut up and let you introduce yourself and actually tell <laughs> us who you are, what you do and whom you do it for. Yeah. Thanks for having me on, Seth. Uh, so we are easy GPS time tracking for construction and field service companies. Um, so it's a mobile time tracking product. Employees clock in and out via easy mobile apps for Android and iOS. Uh, from the office, the administrators or managers can view and edit those timesheets. Print reports uh, all via an easy website. Um, product also has scheduling included. So, you know, those uh, same managers and administrators in the office can schedule their employees. So employees can see their schedule on the mobile device. Um, it's integrated with, we're integrated obviously with QuickBooks, both QBO and desktop editions. Uh, company's been around for about two years, um, actually about three because we were almost a full year in product development before we released something. But product has been on the street for about 24 months. Um, so I'm the co-founder, one of the co-founders here. And uh, so you know, that's a little bit, I guess to get started. Perfect. And all right. So uh, tell us a little bit about, tell us your why. Why did you create clock chart? What did you see? <laughs> when did you see that? <laughs> yeah, I'm fighting a cold here, guys. So if I sound like I'm dying, no worries. then uh, that's why. But uh, so uh, s small and mid-sized construction and field service companies is, is the target market. Um, our typical customer is about three to 200 employees, kind of somewhere in that range. Um, you know, so very small companies on up to mid-sized companies, um, anywhere from single to single locations and in businesses with multiple locations too. Um, so typical customer is, is using paper timesheets currently and uh, probably already using QuickBooks for accounting, whether that's QBO or a desktop version. Great. So, um, you know, probably the best thing to do at this point is just dive into a demo. Do you want to share your screen and yeah, show us around? We can definitely do that. 
let's jump on in. This is what yeah. it's fantastic. The interface is so simple. That's what caught my attention really when I watched the videos. I was like, I love the interface. It's nice and clean. How do I screen share? So if you move your mouse over where you see all our images, a toolbar yep. should appear at the bottom and you'll see a green button under which it says share screen. Got it. All right. You guys seeing that? We sure can. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, um, so what I've done is I've logged into a live account, basically. Uh, so this is an early customer of ours that allows us to show off their account for demo purposes. Uh, so I'm gonna show you inside the website first, and then I'll show you around the mobile app a little bit too. Uh, so the timesheet screen is what we're looking at currently. This is the screen that uh, people are gonna see when they first log into the website. Uh, it is where most of the day-to-day -day workflow is gonna be done with the product in terms of looking at timesheets and editing them, making any changes, et cetera, et cetera, looking at GPS locations. So down the left-hand side of the screen, they get a list of all their employees. Okay, at the top of the screen, we've got the days of the week. Uh, we can move around in the calendar as we need if we wanna look at you know weeks in the past. Okay, and then these yellow blocks that appear on the screen are all electronic timesheets. So on the face of these timesheets, you get some summary information about that timesheet. So like looking at Tyler's here, up top we can see he's got 11 hours for the day. He started his day at 6.30 a.m. He ended his day at 6 p.m. And then underneath that, there's a list of all of the jobs that he worked on that day. So since we're a construction and field service specific product, you know, job costing is really a big deal for these customers. Um, so the product is really good at doing job costing. So we can kind of jump into that in a second too. But uh, and on the face of these, you're gonna see some other icons like this little blue bubble with the uh, talking bubble means that there's been notes entered on the timesheet by the employee or the administrator. Uh, this little green pencil with a piece of paper means the timesheet's been edited. Okay, and if I click on any of these timesheets, I'm gonna get all of the detail for what's going on that day. So clicking into Tyler's here, let's look at what we've got going on inside his timesheet. Okay, so each one of these rows over on the right-hand side obviously is a segment of time. Uh, it's pretty easy to kind of figure that out just by looking at it. So 6.30 a.m. to 9.38 p.m. <laughs> and this is the job he was on and the task he was on. So when they clock in in the mobile app, they're going to select what job and task they're working on. Now carrying that over to, to QuickBooks, okay, a job is going to co correspond to either a customer or a job in QuickBooks and a task is gonna to correspond to a service item in QuickBooks. And all that stuff's just gonna load in automatically from QuickBooks through the integration uh, via, you know, whether that's QBO or desktop, works basically the same, okay? Um, it's a GPS product. Customers that use ClockShark usually do care about that GPS portion. They wanna know where their employees have been all day. Um, not necessarily because they want to be spying on them, but uh, if you've worked around construction and field service companies, you know that they do run into a fair amount of abuses and stuff. Uh, time, time theft is a big issue. Uh, so, so they want to kind of know where their people are. Uh, there's also some operational and logistics benefits to knowing that information. For, you know, for example, if they are dispatching somebody to go over to a job site for some warranty work and they need to know who's nearby, um, they can easily pop onto the map and see that stuff kind of uh, in a live, mostly real-time view, and I'll show you that stuff in a second too. But going back here to this detail view, each one of these punches has a location associated with it, and you can see that just by clicking the uh, GPS pin next to that time. So you can see as I do that, it jumps to the location on the map. We can toggle over to a nice satellite view, uh, zoom in, zoom out on those maps as, as necessary to see exactly where that employee was when they did that punch. Okay, here is some notes that the employee entered. So as they're working throughout the day, at any point during the day, they can enter notes into the mobile app and associate those with the current segment of time that they're working in. Okay, there's a full audit trail in the system. So you can see here, Here's a note from the audit trail that the administrator has made some changes. If I click on this, it's gonna give me what those changes were. Okay. Questions so far? I talk fast too, so. No, this is all great. Uh, the only okay. thing I'm wondering, and you may, it, I may be jumping the gun here a bit when I ask this, but so if I am, just say I'll cover it in a little bit. But <clears throat> one thing I'm wondering is, so let's say I'm, I clock in on a job, right? And then I clock out because I jump over to another job. And then I go back and clock in on the first job. Does ClockShark uh, record completely separate time entries for those, or is it able to consolidate them so that I can see easily all the work I did on one job in one day, even though it was broken up throughout the day? 
Yeah, there's definitely some ways to, to drill down and look at, at, at that. Now, it is going to treat those as different time segments. So every time you either clock in or clock out or switch between different jobs or tasks, it's going to break it out and say, hey, that's an individual segment of time. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, those all roll up, and there's you can either look at those in reports. There's another view out on that main timesheet screen that kind of consolidates all the time that was spent on various jobs, so I can show you how that works. But So you can definitely see the information, I guess. Got it. So Yeah, so I'm able to consolidate it when I want to. I mean, it makes sense. Obviously, especially like when I see the layout here, it makes perfect sense. It shows me exactly where the the, the employee was from 6.30 to 9.38. Then 9.38, he went to the next one till 2.18. And I like how it shows you clearly. He, he clearly just switched from one thing to the next throughout the day until he was done, which is perfect. So I can see the, the layout of the whole day. But then if he had worked on the same job at different points throughout the day, it's nice to know that I'd have the ability somewhere to consolidate that and say, I just want to see how much time he spent on each job each day yeah I definitely a, so i have we'll, a question we'll, yeah go ahead what happens if he forgets to clock out i mean i i can see if the gps changes it'll be you know something to say that can't be right but does that happen i mean i yeah when i do my time of going i always forget to clock out or you know it's like, it, it, it does so i mean we've got a different a couple different ways to handle that uh, the system will automatically end the shift at the end of the day after 23 hours, basically. It will come through, and if there's any shifts that have been left running, it will end those automatically and flag them as a missing out punch. Um, so you'll have a little, the administrator will have a little red exclamation point there when they come into their dashboard. They'll also get an email alert that says missing out punch for this employee. Um, so that's the first thing that will happen. In terms of how you fix that, um, the administrator can either come through and, and see that alert and react to it and call the employee and say, or you know, message the employee and say, hey, you know, it looks like you forgot to clock out. When did you leave work? I need to, to correct this. Um, the other thing that we've enabled recently for companies that want to do this, now it's a permission-based feature, is they can allow their employees to make edits to their own timesheet. Um, like I said, sometimes companies are big in favor of that. Sometimes they're, they're completely against it. Um, and sometimes they want to allow it with specific employees and not with others. Um, so you can do that. It's an employee level permission. So, you know, if you have foremen or supervisors and, and you want to enable uh, those employees to make edits to their own timesheet, uh, you can do that. Now, just like we saw a second ago where you see, I'll show you where it's edited by Charlotte Ehrenberg here. You would see if you had allowed the employee to edit their own timesheet and they make an edit, you would see that it's been edited by the employee when it was edited and exactly what the changes were. Um, so, you know, at least there's an audit trail there. Does that kind of... Yeah, that might be kind of a red flag if the employee's doing a lot of edits, so... Yeah. <laughs> well, and, but what I've run into invariably with this kind of thing is that uh, anytime I don't allow the employee to, you know, edit their time entries, they end up coming back, it seems like almost immediately after I not allow, after I, you know, choose to not allow them. And there's some legitimate thing that they need to be able to get in there and change. And so then it's taking up too much of my time trying to, you know, go in there and release their permissions at one time. So I, I ultimately seem to defer to just letting them edit their time. And especially when I see that we've got the audit trail, I can see And when you click view changes, does it show us exactly what it was and then what it was changed to? Yeah, it does. <laughs> so like sure Dennis said, if you like. see somebody's constantly changing their time, and especially if they're changing their clock in and clock out times, then that, that could definitely be a red flag. But at least you can see that. What I'm trying to avoid as kind of an administrator on these things is having my day interrupted constantly by employees who need to make changes to their time entries. Yep. Yep, that makes sense. Yeah, so we didn't originally have that that uh, ability for employees to edit the product you know, two years ago when we first released it. So that was something that was driven by, hey, we had a lot of customers asking us to add that for the reasons I think, Seth, that you just explained. A lot of people just, you know, they want to put that burden on the employees. And like you said, you can always keep an eye on it. If you see an employee that's making a bunch of edits, it's a red flag and then you can go, you know, address now, You know, it would be a really cool, here's a feature request for you, Cliff. What would be a really cool feature is if I could lock them out by default and then the employee can kind of submit a request and say, I need to edit this time entry. And then in one click, I can just click on something that let's say gives them 24 hours to go in and make a change and then locks them out again. Yeah. That would be really cool. Yeah, that is a cool idea. I mean, we're always listening to all of that and, and iterating and changing the product based on all the feedback that we get. So, Yeah, because then that's not too disruptive on me. I can just click the option and say, yeah, give them 24 hours. They can make their changes, you know. Yep. 
Yeah, no, that is a cool idea. Yeah, and it, maybe would you could, it, it would make it a little more controlled, right, to where you're not just giving people full access. And right. then maybe you could do a count as to how many times you're requesting to make changes. Well, I'm sure there'd be a log of that so that we yeah. can look at those requests yeah. and see how frequently they come in and, and if it's from the same people all the time. Yeah, cool idea for sure. So going through this screen a little bit more, let, let's say we need to make an edit to one of these time rows as the administrator. Um, pretty quick and easy to do that. You can either use drop downs or key in times, change the employee, you can change the job. Uh, if we need to search for a job, say we've got a long list, we can search for the job right there. Um, same thing with tasks, which of course the task is going to correspond to service item over in QuickBooks, uh, enter notes. So making changes to the time for the administrator is really quick. Um, you can jump to a week view here too. Show you that real quick. This just, just gives us a little bit different table view. This is going to give you some of that summary stuff that you were asking about, Seth, there, mm -hmm. where you wanted to see how much time was spent on each job. Yeah. Can I export this to Excel? Yes, you can. I love you. Yeah. So regular and overtime is broken out. Um, you'll do that from the report screen. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, and then you get the whole week's worth of detail in this view. That way you're not having to jump into each day individually. So it makes the editing and review process a lot faster. Okay. Um, so that is just been a quick overview of the viewing timesheets and editing timesheets process. Um, let me show you the who's working now screen. Okay, this screen is going to be a real-time view of what you've got going on out in the field, mostly real-time. Okay, so it, it's going to show you the in punches and the out punches and any switches between jobs or tasks that the employees are doing in the mobile app. That will all be shown in real-time here. Uh, so you can see here, uh, Jesse Morton clocked in 22 minutes ago. Daniel clocked in 22 minutes ago. It's going to show you what job and what task they're clocked into. If I click on any one of these, it's going to jump to that person's location on the map. Of course, I can zoom in on these maps. Uh, you know what would be really probably, funny is if all of a sudden you saw one of those markers moving south and heading straight to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> we used to work in construction. Actually, that's kind of the origin story of this product. And we've actually had crazy stuff like that happen. So it just <laughs> kind of struck a nerve with me there. So when you see one of your trucks disappearing off the map, that's right. <laughs> So you got a list of all the employees that are clocked in currently. This list is updated in real time. Um, I can show you uh, in a second here what the mobile app looks like and what my punches from the mobile app look like coming into this screen in real time. So I'll show you that in a second. On the screen, we can also see a GPS trail. Okay. So let me find one where a guy's been clocked in for a while and has been moving around. I can hopefully get some good GPS trail information. Here we go. Oh, that's cool. So for James here, he clocked in three hours ago. Uh, we can see that his original clock in was up here. And the most recent location that we've sampled for him is down here. How frequently so, does it sample the location? Three to four times per hour. Yeah. Okay. And the reason we say three to four is because uh, the way the mobile app, the operating systems work on these mobile devices now, they don't really give us as an app developer full control over how frequently we pull a GPS location from the device. Mm -hmm. There are variables there like battery life and what else is going on on the device. So we basically say, hey, we want to get a GPS location and the device tells us whether or not we can get one. So we mm -hmm. say out at three to four times per hour, we're able to ping GPS generally. Got it. The reason we don't try to do it more frequently than that is for battery drain reasons. Right, right. So like a fleet tracking product that's connected to, you know, like these modules that go in, in, in a truck connected to the 12 volt system on the truck, you know, those things ping every couple minutes. But uh, if we did that on a cell phone, the guys would all be complaining after half an hour that we killed their battery and that would be bad. So, yeah. Yep. Can you uh, use it? Can you use it to like optimize their, their schedule? I mean, if you can project their schedule and see they're kind of going ping ponging back and forth, maybe you could arrange it so that you could make it more logical, uh, you know, workflow or at least a schedule flow. If you have a schedule, you know, if they can, you know, in terms of managing their schedule, in terms of cutting down the distance, if you could project it out by their schedule. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's definitely another use of. <laughs> GPS is kind of scheduling logistics stuff. I mean, in uh, big construction projects, that's not going to be a big deal probably, but like on service work where you've got guys bouncing around throughout the day, you might have, uh, let's say, plumbers or, you know, 
heating and air conditioning repair people. You may have uh, service calls coming in throughout the day. And um, so we don't do any route optimization. There are some products out there that will actually allow you to enter a series of addresses and then build optimized routes and stuff like that. Uh, we don't do anything like that, but they can certainly log in and look at where all their people are and, and pick the closest person um, based on what they're seeing. So a good point. So let me flip over to the uh, mobile app real quick, and I will show you guys that uh, for some reason. My side sync has gone dead. Of course, we're going to have technical problems. It wouldn't be <laughs> technical problems, right? That's okay. We get to see how you handle them. <laughs> it was working right before we came on. Seth, you got to have your technical problems before we went live on the air. That's no fair. I did. I had to reboot. I had to reboot. Well, I'll get that. I like that song. Yeah, I thought I'd just provide some good background music. <laughs> I got to change that ringtone. I've been Every saying that for a year. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody seen any good movies? Oh, come on, work. Star Trek. Yeah, start, definitely go see Star Trek. My client actually is the visual effects producer on all those movies. Dude, I was just at the wedding two weeks ago of the music director for Star Trek. Nice. That, yeah, is, that, that, that's what California's all about. We all know somebody in Star Trek. Exactly. <laughs> um, it's funny. I, uh, you know, I was with him not long ago. And, uh, you know, because he's, he's a client of mine. I actually help him to this day with his books. <laughs> and he was telling me right before the movie was released. Now I can share it with you. Um, so I haven't actually seen it yet. But Richard, did you on the? I think he said it's about the last scene. There's a shot with like thousands of workers walking, like uh -huh. on a landscape, but it's from a distance, so you can't really see who they are. Yeah. So those those people are all carbon copy images of him and his one of his producing as you know producer associates just duplicated thousands and thousands of times and then put into the scene and, and they they animated them walking around. I thought that's that was, really funny. I said I said next time can you please put my likeness in there too? I said I want to be able to tell people <laughs> look that's me. <laughs> over and over and over again. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, so we got the technical issues worked out. So All you guys, right. Uh, so right here in the middle of my screen is the mobile app. Okay, um, mobile apps are available for Android and iPhone. They look almost identical and function almost identical. Okay, so this screen that we're looking at is the time clock screen. There's a few other screens here in the mobile app that I can show you too. This is where most of the work's going to get done. So clocking in is simple. The employee's going to select a list select a job from the list of jobs. If they have a long list of jobs, like we have customers that have hundreds and hundreds of active jobs, they can search for it. Okay, and it's gonna show them all the matching jobs. So they're gonna select the job and they're gonna select what labor task they're working on. Let's say we're working on rebar and then they're gonna clock in. Okay. And is, so let's, while we're here, let's talk integration. So I assume this integrates with QuickBooks, QuickBooks Online? Yes, QuickBooks Online. QuickBooks Desktop through the Web Connector. Um, so we've got QuickBooks covered. So it's getting those jobs from my customer job list. It's getting the codes through my item or products and services list? That's correct. Okay. Yeah, so service items are going to be what we call a task in ClockShark. Mm -hmm. um, jobs in ClockShark are going to be either a customer or a customer colon job, you know, a job underneath a customer in QuickBooks. Just like QuickBooks, right. Okay, perfect. Yeah, exactly. Makes sense. And any other integrations? No, not at this point, although we're working on others. I mean, we've been very QuickBooks centric um, since early on. Most, most all of our customers and prospective customers are on QuickBooks. We focus a lot on small business. Right. So um, that has been our focus. Um, we are looking at some other things. We're looking at zero. Um, we're looking at 
know, Sage isn't super integration friendly, although we do run into a lot of construction folks on Sage. Yeah, you have to work closely with them to get an integration done. Yeah, so, I mean, we'll, we would probably do zero before we do Sage, but so that's where we're at right now. Right. Now, I know, like, one guy on Facebook commented on my post, you know, for today's show, wondering if it integrates with Insightly. And so more generally, um, I know a lot of people who are using different project management applications are always wondering if their time tracking app can sync to that project management application. Are you guys looking at any of those kinds of integrations? That's interesting. We haven't heard a whole lot of requests for uh, CRM type integration like that or project management type integration. But um, Yeah, because a lot of them have their own built-in time tools, but they're all terrible. You know, they're all pretty much you have to manually key in oh, yeah. how much time you spent. There's no clocking in and clocking out. So to be able to pull right. data from an app like yours into the project manager so I can see within my project management application who's spending how much time on which job could be very useful. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely see how it could be useful. I mean, we've, we follow the, you know, lean startup kind of methodology, so we're just, you know, right. we're... Test, test, test. Yep. Test, test, test. Iterate, iterate, iterate. And it's all based on all the feedback we're hearing from customers. Um, so that one hasn't been like a major request. Um, Got it. But we'll, I mean, we'll probably work on more integration, more accounting integrations before we did anything with project management stuff. But we're always listening and <coughs> do what people ask us to do. <laughs> Got it. So um, got the mobile app up here. You can see here's my clock in from three minutes ago. Um, it appeared pretty much instantly. Switching in the mobile app is easy. So if I need to switch jobs or tasks. And so you didn't have to click switch. You just click and change the job and it starts a new clock. Oh, you click switch oh, you after. You click switch. So you're going to click okay. switch after. Yeah. I got it. And you can see my switch just came into the dashboard in real time. Okay. So that's interesting. I would expect to do it the other way. I would normally think I'd click switch first and then choose the new job. Does it matter? Can I do it either way? Uh, no, you have to do it. You have to, you have to choose the new job for, okay. Yeah. Nope. yeah. We have had, you're right. I mean, I see, I see how people could, could construe that either way, but yeah. Okay. We'll figure it out pretty quick. Um, <laughs> starting a lunch, starting a lunch break. So it just pauses the uh, clock, I assume, or it actually yeah. times the lunch break. I it's like that. Timer for lunch and it's going to mark that as a lunch segment, ending the lunch. Okay. <sighs> So that's all kind of boring, but I mean, I wanted to show you all that stuff so you can understand how it works. Um, let's say stops for lunch. Okay, so the employee has entered some notes now. Those will be visible on that timesheet. Right. Okay. Um, scheduling, viewing schedules is going to be right in here. Okay. Now, in this case, I haven't set up a schedule for myself here because I wasn't properly prepared for this demo this morning. <laughs> but I'll set one up for myself right now. And then you guys can see what that looks like. Let me jump over to the scheduler real quick. Um, so ClockShark has scheduling in it too. Uh, we think of it as a, um, it's an added bonus in the product. So customers generally come to ClockShark looking for time tracking. And then they go, oh, and you have <coughs> scheduling too? That's awesome. Like we will definitely use the scheduling too. It's not the core of the product. The core of the product is the time tracking. Okay. Um, but so... The scheduling is pretty simple. So on the left-hand side of the screen here, we have a list of all of our jobs. Okay, we can change the colors of these if we want to for visual cues as to, you know, what job is what, and or what type of job it is, or whatever you want to use those colors for. And then scheduling is as simple as dragging and dropping jobs on the schedule. Okay, let me find myself here in the list. I'm going to put some jobs on the schedule for myself. Okay. By default, these go onto the schedule as all day. When you click on them, you can edit them, change the shift times. We can also set a reminder here, a clock-in reminder for the employee. So if we set this clock-in reminder, the employee will get either a push notification on the mobile device or an email reminding them to clock in. That's another feature that was just added recently based on feedback that we've been hearing from customers. They're like, hey, just like the um, question we had a minute ago, what if the employee forgets to clock out? Uh, another really common one is I forgot to clock in. Um, so we just added this for a clock in reminder. We will be extending it in the next month or so to a clock out reminder also. That, and then that clock out reminder will correspond to the scheduled out time for the shift. So the employee hasn't clocked out at that time. Uh, so you'll either be able to remind them before the clock out or, or just after the time they were supposed to clock out saying, hey, weren't you supposed to clock out? So that's kind of scheduling in a nutshell. You can also enter notes here on the schedule for the employee. So if you wanted to say, hey, scope of work at this job is uh, hammer in some nails, we can do that. Uh, the employee will see that on their mobile app. Let me flip back over to that, show you what that schedule looks like now. 
Oh, and it would help if I didn't put it on Mitchell Seth and I actually put it on Mitchell Cliff, which is me. Let's put it on myself. Okay, so you can see now that schedule is visible to me in the mobile app. Okay, on this one that I put some notes on, I click on this at the job description, which is a tower replacement. Now that comes from the job in ClockShark. I'll show you that on another screen. Uh, we can also put job addresses in here. If we put that job address in here, we're going to be able to navigate to that job address right from the mobile app. So, um, you know, employees having trouble finding where to go in the morning when they're going out to their job uh, is a thing of the past. Um, you know, they'll now be able to just look at their schedule, click the navigate to button in the mobile app and navigate directly to that address. Um, employee can view all their timesheets from the mobile app and if they have those edit permissions, they can also make those edits right in here on the timesheet in the mobile app, okay. like we talked about earlier. Um, let's jump into the reporting real quick. Um, Seth, you had asked about seeing like rolled up total stuff like that for different jobs. Uh, I'll show you that in a second, but I, I want to show you the main report that a lot of companies do use ClockShark even when they're not using QuickBooks. And a lot of times we'll run into companies that might be using QuickBooks for like all their journal entries, but they might not be doing payroll in QuickBooks. Um, so we have a lot of companies like that that use ClockShark too. Uh, so if that's the case, let's say they're using a third-party payroll company like ADP or Paychex or Gusto or somebody like that, um, they can still use ClockShark. And what they're going to do is just either print reports and export a PDF of their timesheets, or they're going to uh, export a CSV file, which is a, obviously a Excel-compatible spreadsheet format. So the timesheets report, I'll show you that real quick so you can see what it looks like. Well, set the date range correctly. <laughs> I hear the customer experience team in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That sounds like Luke. <laughs> yeah, Luke's cubicle is right next to me. So there's a bunch of employees there at the beginning of the report who didn't have any time, so I'm just scrolling through them. But uh, so this is what a time, the timesheets report looks like. Um, you get a different page for each employee. You get a different row for each job and task combination that the employee has worked on. Uh, and you get summaries. So uh, down at the bottom here, you can see on Tuesday, uh, that's the grand total for the day for the employee, 11 hours. On Wednesday, 13 hours. Um, grand totals for the week over here. So this job and task combination, total of 48 hours for the week. Now at the bottom, obviously, your regular and overtime totals are down there. Okay. So that's the timesheets report. That's the one that gets run most frequently to, to run payroll because it's designed to have everything on it. Sure. Can. Now, let's say, because I noticed there's a CSV dropdown. <clears throat> Is there a way to get the times formatted in decimals instead of time? Or I would yes. have to just do that in Excel? for once No, you can do that, Seth. So. Okay. Um, so you would come over to your company settings here. And you would just toggle everything over from your uh, your time display format. Perfect. The site is either going to be in hours and minutes or it's going to be in decimal. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Back to reports. All right. Back to reports. Let me show you the uh, the job details report. This is another one. I won't go through all these reports individually because it get too too time consuming. But you know we've got a bunch of reports there to cover all the various things that most construction or field service businesses are wanting to see in terms of reporting. This is another cool report. It's the job details report. Uh, it's going to give you everything that's happened on a specific job during any given date range. Uh, so for def by default, it's going to give you all employees. You can select a subset of employees if you wanted to select a subset. Uh, let's say I'm going to pick one job here to run this report for that I know has some activity on it. And while that's uh, working, uh, when I create a job, can I create it in ClockShark and it'll sync back to QuickBooks? Is it sync bi-directional or it has to be initiated in QuickBooks? Yeah, so um, in QuickBooks Online, you can definitely uh, do it both ways. A QuickBooks Desktop is a little bit different. Um, desktop, we can only create the job in QuickBooks and have it come into ClockShark. Got it, okay. Um, QuickBooks Online, because of the API, 
um, does allow us to do that either way. Yeah, no, and that's common. A lot of times when you're going cloud to cloud, it's just easier to uh, write those calls. Yep, exactly. Yeah, and that's a setting in the uh, QuickBooks setting, so we can kind of show you guys that stuff in, in a second. Okay, the other thing while we're waiting, um, Sarah wanted to know, um, it's, I, I assume that the case is yes, that we can upload our own logo for branding into our account, or can we? No. <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> um, and how does it handle overtime? Will it automatically calculate overtime? Yeah, the logo one is when we have, are you talking about like a customer being able to upload their logo for their own custom, having their own company branding or like a partner having their own like white labeling on there? No, no, I think that's more in the context of if I'm going to start using ClockChart for my own company, I might want to put my own logo there so that my employees recognize, you know, that it's our company's, you know, tool that we're using. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, um, it's something we're looking at. Uh, we've definitely had some requests for it, so it's some, kind of something that's on our list of things to do, I and mean, we're constantly adding things. So you may see that soon. Cool. So here's then, that job. Here's that job detail report. My internet was acting a little bit funny there for a second, but um, basically, it's going to give you one job, all of the <coughs> date range. So you see the date range, the report generated date, job, all of the detail for all of the employees, and then down at the bottom of the report. We've got employee totals, so we can see, hey, this employee during that date range on that job had 60 hours. Uh, we can see all of our task totals. So we spent 230 hours on labor work, 20 hours on machine operator time, and then you get your grand total for that job for that date range. Hey, so, Cliff, Cliff, can you jump into how it handles overtime? Yeah, um, so overtime is based on um, settings. You won't see overtime, by the way, in this report. Only some of the reports show overtime. Um, like the, the reports that are designed for payroll purposes are going to break out that overtime. Mm -hmm. uh, but overtime is all based on a setting in the system. So if you come here under your company settings, okay, you're going to come in here and you're going to basically set up those overtime rules based on whatever overtime rules you, your company's playing by. So, so you can do like 40 hours in a week or eight hours in a day. Yep. And then can you break it up? So I know it changes all the time, but I know at one time in the state of California, it was over eight hours a day was time and a half. And then beyond, I think it was 10 hours was double time they had to pay. So are you able to say, so okay, there it is, right? There. Yeah. Yeah. So California is kind of the weirdest one in terms of, of course. That, all those <laughs> we're <laughs> a little out there. <laughs> I'm from California, so I can talk about how weird we are, but um, yeah. So California overtime rules are built in. All they have to do to, to, to comply That's with funny that you actually have a special setting just for California. <laughs> we had to. We had to because it, it's complex enough that people would probably configure it wrong otherwise. Yeah. That's yeah. hysterical. Yep. So uh, that's your overtime. Um, what break. about the, um, the time themselves? Are, are you able to round them to 15-minute increments like for billing purposes to my clients if I want to build the time back? Yes. Rounding. Right here. There it time is. Rounding. You There's guys have thought of everything. I love that. So Which nearest five minutes is for law firms and 15 minutes is for everyone else because you know how <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, so yeah, the time rounding is there. Um, lunch breaks can be inserted either with that button that we saw a second ago in the mobile app or they can also be inserted automatically based on a rule. So if I want to insert lunch breaks automatically, I can say insert a lunch break every time the day exceeds four hours and insert a one hour break. Okay, and those lunch breaks will be plugged into the timesheet automatically. Some companies just like doing that one way or the other. Um, they feel like, hey, if they allow the guys to clock in and out, it, uh, they either will claim they didn't take a lunch break and not clock out for it and all kinds of stuff like that. So a lot of them like the automatic lunch break. Um, jobs and tasks, let me show you that real quick. All that stuff's, and I don't know how much how we're doing on time, Seth. Or, uh, we have plenty of time, 20 minutes. Okay, cool. So jobs and tasks. And at the end, by the way, we're also going to want to talk about, of course, pricing and the partner program. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I've got some slides I can kind of show you guys on that stuff too. Um, jobs are administered right here under your admin menu. Now, of course, these are going to come in. If you're connected to QuickBooks, these are going to come in directly from QuickBooks. They come in pretty much you know, within an hour, whether it's QBO or QuickBooks desktop. It's an hourly sync. Okay, so they're entering that stuff. It's just flowing right into ClockShark. It's immediately available. 
in the clock shark system and, and the employees can just start clocking into those automatically. So if they got jobs coming in over the phone, they've got a dispatcher sitting there, you can put those into QuickBooks within an hour, they'll be in the time clock system. Um, so they've got a list of all their jobs here. Um, let me show you what the jobs look like themselves. Inside a job, job name, job number. Now, QuickBooks doesn't really have a concept of a job number. <coughs> so this would have been a job that was probably keyed in uh, manually in the clock shark. Either that or they edited it after it came in from QuickBooks. Um, job description goes there. Okay, so this job description will be visible to the employee on the schedule if the job is scheduled. Okay, um, they can also set a color for the job if they want to color code those so to make things easier in some way or categorize them. Okay. Access control. Uh, what is this all about? Let's say you have a lot of jobs and you have a lot of employees. You don't want your employees to get confused because they're clocking in and out and you want them only to see the jobs that are applicable to them. Um, you can set this access control. So by default, everybody is going to be able to see all of the jobs that come into the system. But if we want to allow only specific employees, let's say we only want David, Francisco, and Tyler to be able to see this job in their time clock in the list that we showed you, uh, you're just going to select those three employees. And it's that simple. And now nobody else will have this job in their jobs list in the time clock. Okay. Same thing with tasks. Um, those lists of tasks can get really long sometimes, especially around construction. Um, certified wages or scale pay type jobs, for example, um, they may have 10, 15 different categories that they're having to track for those jobs. And those are different categories that they might be using uh, on other job, from other jobs on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so this task control comes in handy for stuff like that because they can come in and allow only these three tasks. And once they've done that, when, they, when that employee clocks into that job, instead of seeing that whole list of tasks, the, you know, the globally available list of tasks, now they're only going to see these three. Okay. Um, so that's great for, you know, frankly, one of the big problems around paper timesheets and the reason that like, you know, most employers are scrambling and trying to figure out how to get onto these automated time tracking products like ClockShark is because of the mess that paper timesheets make around stuff like that. Uh, they have guys writing down just all kinds of crazy job codes and, and, and labor codes, and then the administrators in the office are getting those timesheets back, and they're like, what is this? Like, these aren't the right job codes, not the right job names, and they're tearing their hair out. Um, so by using these task control, the access control for jobs and the task control for tasks, um, you can kind of limit things and say, hey, you only have these choices. Um, so that they're going to be more likely to be successful with their time entry. And while we're talking about the tasks, because these are the same tasks that we talked about earlier that are the, the, they're linked up to the um, the item codes in QuickBooks, right? Right, exactly. So Sarah wanted to know, she says, we have multiple pay codes and desktop that point to different GL accounts, including their own OT codes. Um, and Sarah, I'm not sure I understand the question you're asking, but these are different codes than service codes. In QuickBooks, you only have one kind of code in your item list. So you want to unmute maybe and clarify the question? Well, I haven't worked with timesheets in many, many years. So I'm trying to remember there were two codes, I thought, on a timesheet. Not just the pay code, but a server. How did we do that? Well, there's always going to be an item code, which is going to be... Oh, the two. item code. That's what it was. There was an item code, and then there was actually the pay code that controlled how much they were paid. And and so I just remember there being two codes. So when you're, so which code are you looking at? The pay code or an item code? Well, in QuickBooks, it's one code. It's just the item code, and that code can be configured for a particular pay rate. But that assumes that every employee whose labor is described by that code is being paid the same. No, yeah, mine so, don't like that. Uh, so what I think uh, Sarah's talking about is uh, payroll items. In yeah. QuickBooks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so. Um, we can link to those payroll items in, in a little bit different way, and I can show you guys that real quick. So these tasks that we're looking at here are going to match one-to-one -one with a QuickBooks service item. Uh, and then the service item selection, like so when that timesheet goes into QuickBooks, it's going to have the, the customer colon job, and it's also going to have the service item on that row of time in the timesheet. And then that row of time, so that service item selection, like Seth was kind of getting at there, can drive the selection of a different payroll item in QuickBooks, which then can then drive the assignment of a specific pay rate uh, for a specific employee. 
if that does that all make sense yeah i with uh, my uh the clients that i'm thinking about automating their timesheets are museums that have a lot of events so they've got bartenders they have docents they have museum staff they've got janitors you know so the event people are grabbing job names but they may be uh working a bartender gets paid differently than a um somebody busting tables you know so uh, i've got this whole series of payroll item codes that i use to control that okay. not necessarily uh item codes yeah. right but i could set those up i'm just trying to remember how it works i don't remember and then how when, when we interface with desktop it populates the timesheet I would love to see a screenshot of that. Or... Um, I can show you some screenshots of our QuickBooks uh, integration screen. Let me throw PowerPoint on my screen real quick. So this is kind of, um, this is what that timesheet looks like. And are we talking about desktop QuickBooks, Sarah? Uh, yes, that's that's exactly it. Okay, so service item code and plus a payroll item code because one is controlling one thing and one is controlling how much they're paid and where it goes in the general ledger. Yeah, so in Clock Shark, we can map this service item code. When we export the time, we're also going to export it to specific payroll items. You can see here hourly, overtime. But we can change that in uh, Clock Shark so that uh, a different service item will drive a different payroll item. So, so the service item uh, has to be linked to a particular payroll item. So you'd have to create a, a separate service item for every combination of service item and payroll item. Okay. Um, yeah, that's basically correct, Seth. That's the okay. way it works. Yep. And that's in the item code list? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's also it's in the, uh, the mapping screen in Clock Shark, which I can show you. Really okay. Quick. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm just pulling the memory thing. I'm I'm uh, and I'm in the car, so I'm not near computer. <laughs> yeah, and I mean setting that stuff up is kind of um, you know it takes us about an hour. We usually do it. We don't just throw people to the wolves on that. It's not super hard to do, but a lot of times people benefit from spending an hour with us on the phone with one of our customer success team and just going through that configuration of all of the business logic between QuickBooks and ClockShark to make sure that um, it's all set up for success. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, so if you ever want to talk offline on that stuff, Sarah, for any specific clients, just let us know. We'd be happy to spend some time with you on the phone. Fantastic. Yeah. Because I know, I know there's timesheet programs that interface with QuickBooks, but then they say it really doesn't job cost the labor, um, but it would if, it, if it's still on the top correctly. And we're yeah, running it, payroll within desktop, it should, it should job cost it perfectly. It will job cost it perfectly. QBO is a little bit more of a, uh, a little bit more limitations in terms of how the uh, labor costing actually transfers over to payroll, but um, desktop, uh, and I'm sure they'll get there with QBO as they're dealing with everything else, but desktop is very mature in that sense and it allows all that costing to happen. So once in a while we run into really complex setups that employers have where we just, we can't find a way to automate it 100% and maybe we can get to 80 or 90% automation and and they're still having to come into these timesheets in QuickBooks after all the time is loaded into into QuickBooks and make a few manual edits or changes before they actually generate payroll but in those cases we always say to those customers we say hey well what percentage of automation were we at before and they say exactly <laughs> well the, what I was thinking with the overtime um I know that if I have somebody who's doing all different kinds of jobs all week and then, bam, they get overtime, I have to decide which overtime code I'm going to use. Yeah. But as long as I can, once I can, if I can get the timesheet at least, you know, 98% in QuickBooks, that's half the battle. Sir, can you, can you say that again? You, I, I didn't quite understand what, what you said. Well, okay, so if I, if I have somebody who's uh, a museum docent all week and then they, they work on a Saturday and they're a bartender, 
and now I've got an overtime issue. I have to, um, I might have overtime bartender as a code. I may have a, a museum docent yeah. as an overtime because they go to two completely different areas um, in the uh, and then the different hours. in the general ledger. Well, and we're also we're also very class code conscious too. Um, did, did it handle class codes at all, or could I do that once it gets into the timesheet? Yeah, we don't handle classes at all. It's okay. not because we don't understand that some people are going to want to do that. It's just not something we've built yet. We right. don't have tons and tons of people screaming at us about it. So it seems like most of the customers we're working with aren't using classes. We do get some requests for it. So it's kind of on our list of things to do soon. Oh, okay. Built yet. Yeah, because with the want... nonprofit, I just have, I have to keep the... Uh, especially for a, a event, accounting is different than the main nonprofit accounting, which is different from fundraising. Yep. Yeah, it can get pretty crazy. Okay. Well, I'm pretty sure we could figure out a way to automate that stuff for you. So, I mean, if you ever want to talk offline on that. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, we'll talk later. Yeah, definitely. Um, let me show you real quick. Um, this is the Seth. You were asking about. Hey, do you have when you add jobs? Can you either do it in QuickBooks or ClockShark, and then have it populate across uh, into the other system? Yeah. So this this is the QuickBooks Online setting screen in ClockShark. Mm -hmm. So you can see right over here, we've got that setting for auto map direction, uh, and that's what that does. So if you want to add stuff in QuickBooks and have it flow into ClockShark, um, you can set things that way. If you want to add jobs in ClockShark and have them automatically created. Uh, so you can go one way or the other. Yeah. You have the choice, but you ha it has to be one or the other. Can't be That's interesting yeah. because here's what happens a lot is the employee wants to clock in on a new job that hasn't been set up yet, and it'd be cool to give them the ability to create the job on the fly or at least a manager or somebody. You know, yeah, so they, they can do that currently, Seth. Um, I'll show you that real quick in the mobile app. But the problem with enabling it is what you said, which is it can create some issues if they're using the QuickBooks integration. Um, with you know, unless they're using if they're using QBO, it's going to work pretty smooth as long as you've got this setting for ClockShark to QuickBooks and that everything is flowing from ClockShark into QuickBooks. If they have it set the other direction, potentially it's going to create some issues because the employee is going to be clocking time that's not linked to a corresponding QuickBooks job. Right, right. If they go to export, they're going to get a warning from our system saying, "Hey, this isn't linked to QuickBooks." Oh, so if they create uh, the job and it's going from ClockShark to QuickBooks, it, oh, I see. If you enable it and then you have it going only QuickBooks to ClockShark. That's where you'll have a problem. Yeah, exactly. Right. So you don't well, enable it for them if you're going clock shark to QuickBooks. Then it should be okay, right? Right. Yeah. And then um, and you can't do that on desktop is the only problem because the desktop, the web connector on desktop doesn't allow us to actually create jobs or customers inside QuickBooks. It only allows us to pull them out of QuickBooks. Okay. Kind of a weird eccentricity of the, the web connector. Works. Oh, this is for QuickBooks Online. So you would not, in the but, de case of desktop, yeah. you would simply not ever have them create a new job in ClockShark. Yeah, this setting screen we're looking at is just for QuickBooks Online. So that's not even an option with desktop. And in QuickBooks Online, can you change the setting? Can you say, hey, you know what? I got a lot of new jobs. I'm just going to go ClockShark to QuickBooks this week. Or once you set it, that's it. Um. I would not recommend it. I, I haven't had a whole lot of experience with flipping that setting back and forth. I, I can't okay. tell you exactly what the results would be, but um, okay. generally they're going to want to keep that one way or the other. See, I always try and find ways to break your application. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so here's how in the mobile app, they can add that job directly from the mobile app. Okay. Now this is a permission based feature. So a lot of companies don't want employees to be able to add jobs to the system. So they can <clears> turn <throat> this on or off for specific employees. Yeah. Well, and of course you can imagine that you're going to end up getting two different employees who work on the same job, each creating their own version of the job. So yeah, I can see where the pitfalls are already. But exactly, exactly. Yeah. So can you? So if I merge two jobs in QuickBooks, will that get reflected in Clock Shark? Um, good question. What is the? I didn't even know that was possible. You're talking about in QuickBooks Online? Yeah, in QBO, I can merge same as in Desktop by simply renaming one to agree exactly with the other, and then QuickBooks will say, "Hey, you already have a job with this name. Would you like to merge them?" And it'll do it. Yeah, good question. I'm not exactly sure what would happen. Um, we can test it. I don't have the answer for you, but I'm happy to get it for you and uh, email you afterwards. Okay. Yeah, that'd be interesting to know. Yeah, that one's never come up. Um, 
so these are the mapping screens. Basically, it just, um, you know, like there's a one-to-one -one relationship between customers and jobs. So if there's anything ever needs to be changed, uh, the customer has access to go in there and access those mappings. Normally, they wouldn't have to touch these. It's just kind of an under-the-hood um, thing that they can go um, tweak if they ever need to. Mm -hmm. um, we can send you guys out some Clock Shark shirts. Absolutely. Uh, send me some. Are you going to be a QuickBooks Connect? We are. Beautiful. We are. Yep, so um, we're looking forward to meeting everybody I'll, there. I'll send you some of my shirts if you send me some of yours. <laughs> I kind of jumped around. I didn't go through my whole slide deck, but um, I'll give you guys pricing real quick. Uh, simple pricing, $25 a month base fee for the service, $5 a month per employee tracked. Now, that would that's not super expensive for a small group of employees. <laughs> if you've got five employees, you're looking at 50 bucks a month, the cost of a single cell phone. Um, for employers that get up into lots and lots of employees, that can get really expensive really quick, right? Let's say they've got 100 employees, and so we're talking five bucks per employee per month. Um, and 20, that's $500 a month for a time tracking product. It's not going to actually cost that much, though. Um, unlike some other... and Real, real quick, I'm going to talk about the elephant in the room too, um, which is uh, T-Sheets. Our pricing is a little bit different than T-Sheets. When you get up into those large groups of employees is where it really gets different. Um, so our pricing goes down over 30 employees. So we have tiered pricing at 30 employees, it's a 15% discount. At 40 employees, it's a 20% discount. Over 50, it's a 25% discount. And then over 80 employees, it's a 30% discount. Um, and then we also have a buy one buy an, buy an annual plan and get two months free. So uh, pricing on large groups of employees with Clockshark is significantly lower than our, our big competitor. Um, so uh, here's an example price. And you said it's five dollars per month per employee. Is there a base of? Is there a monthly base on top of that, or it's just straight up you pay per employee? Yeah, there is a base. It's $25 a month. Base. Okay, so it's $25. Sorry, I probably missed that. You probably said it. So yeah, it's $25 plus $5 per employee. And then once we get over each of these tiers, we get a percentage drop in the in the pricing. And does that percentage drop apply only to the monthly or does it apply to the, I mean, the base is going to be $25. Obviously, that's yeah, they'll, adding they'll up. They'll get that percentage, that tiered percentage discount for volume, whether they do an annual or a monthly pay. And there again, with the annual, they get the equivalent of two months free per year. Right. Okay. But So this is just the sort of financial modeler in me trying to visualize the calculation. When I yep. apply the percentage drop in price, do I apply it to the total including the base or just the monthly? Total including the base. Okay. Yes, that's across the board. So like an example price, Seth, would for 100 employees on ClockShark with scheduling, because in, in ClockShark we don't charge anything extra for the scheduling, $368 a month. Um, and on our major competitor, which is T-Sheets, $725 a month for the same service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Both products, very similar, solve the same core problem and tracking and scheduling. Both products do a good job of it. And by the way, um, we think those guys build a, a great product. Uh, hats off to them. They're great marketers. Obviously, we're trying to do things a little bit differently. So, you know, we do like to kind of touch on the, the elephant in the room concept real quick because sure. you know, everybody has heard of T-Sheets. Uh, and some of you might be wearing T-Sheets T-shirts right now. <laughs> <laughs> no. but a few key differences there ease of use and user experience um, we've built the product from the ground up to be super simple in its user interface and in its setup okay um, that was something we understood from early on was really important to our specific industry vertical um, all of, we hear this day in and day out uh, Hey, it has to be easy for our guys. Our people aren't super technical, whether it's the people in the office or the people in the field. So that's been a, a kind of core tenet of how we've developed the product. We're also built specifically for construction and field service, um, whereas T-Sheets is, a, is a more of a, a general market product. Uh, anybody that needs payroll time tracking, T-Sheets. Okay. Um, ClockShark is built for construction and field service. So the marketing and a lot of stuff in the product in terms of the setup and the features is designed to resonate more for construction uh, and field service companies. Like I'm company. curious, your slide six, it looks like you have yourselves alongside you know, them and some other competitors. Did you mind clicking on that? I'm just curious to take a look. Yeah, definitely. This is uh, from apps.com. So right. it's just kind of showing that we're currently the fourth most reviewed time tracker on apps.com. Um, 80 five-star reviews. Uh, 
I'll show you one of those reviews. <laughs> Here's the big guys over on the left. They've been around for five years. Um, they're again, great product. Um, just we're a little different. Ability uh, is really a different market. Some of you guys are probably familiar with that product. They're more like uh, professional services type stuff, although, and it's more like a time entry product than a time clocking product. So we say, hey, it's keying in times versus clocking them in, in real time via clock. Big time, same thing. I think they're uh, more like a professional services and accounting firm oriented. Got it. Some of you guys might be using big time in your firms and stuff. So I, you know, it's uh, funny. I haven't heard of big time in a long time. <laughs> That's yeah. yeah, they've got a lot of reviews there. So, um, so I mean, I guess the, the point of this slide is that we're kind of um, – Second in line behind T-shirts in terms of uh, review volume and uh, size, uh, in terms of the QuickBooks ecosystem in time trackers that are aimed at payroll time tracking, um, we're you know we're right in there and hopefully gaining ground and kind of closing on them quickly. Gotcha. All right, cool. So and um, we have uh, actually like two minutes left. So let's talk about the partner program. Yeah, so jumping into the partner program, um, we do have one, 30% um, recurring commission. Uh, so we call in that perpetuity the or? In perpetuity, yes. Nice. Yeah, so we call that the Certified Shark Program. Um, we'll give you this nice shiny badge for your email signature or your website. Um, we work closely with partners. We uh, have basically a training session that we do with partners uh, where we get you up to speed, show you the system, make sure that you understand how everything works, uh, understand which of your clients it may be a good fit for and which it may not. Um, so, yeah, that's all pretty uh, free account, of course, uh, free account for the partner. And we also list you on our partner directory. Um, for you know our customers so that they can see who our approved partners are in case they're needing accounting services. Cool. Um, I kind of jumped around in my slide deck here, but yeah, is this thing over yet? Yeah, pretty <laughs> much. Um, <laughs> built specifically, I mean, the, the closing points were built specifically for construction and field service, not for everybody. Uh, we have deep industry experience around construction, so as we're working with your clients or you know people that potentially need time tracking, and they're a construction business or a field service business, we're able to really understand those problems and talk to them and provide a solution because we have that, that deep industry experience. Less expensive, especially on big groups of employees, uh, and also built to be easy to use and, and easy to understand. So, And there's a 14-day free trial, so we'd love to have everybody check it out and at least start up an account and kind of play around with it. If anybody's interested in talking with us on partner stuff, um, definitely hit us up. Um, you can email us info at clockshark.com or call us on uh, 800 828 I'll put those up on the screen there real quick. Uh, or go to the partners page on the website. You can get to that right from the homepage. Um, just so one one page application it takes like two minutes to fill it out, and we'll get back with you uh, within a few hours, usually, or the same business day, and get you started on a training session and get you ramped up. Beautiful. Cliff. Let me, uh, why don't you turn off the screen share and then uh, we'll kind of close things out. Um, so first of all, thank you. I really appreciate that. It's, uh, it looks like an amazing product. Um, I'm excited to get into it and just start actually using it more. Is there a demo company that people can get in and play around with by any chance or? Yeah, the best thing would be just to start a free trial and, um, you know, please just do that. I mean, it's, uh, okay. It's Therefore, and that allows you to get in. We don't have like a, a demo account per se, but getting into a free trial would be the way to do it. Okay, got it, got it. And uh, very cool. So anybody else have any questions? It's good timing, especially with this uh, December 1st deadline bearing down on us. What December yeah. 1st deadline? Yeah, it is changing, yeah, you changing. Uh, you cannot pay people salary if they make under a certain amount of money a year. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we're working on a post for our blog on that right now, actually. Yep. So that's that's my way of, I mean, I'm just going to have to automate everybody because a hill's about to break. <laughs> Wait, so I missed that. Changing the salary. Would you mind repeating okay. the new rule? Okay. You're not, you're, you are not allowed 
to exempt anybody from overtime if they make less than oh, 40, 913 a week. Okay, I thought that was right. already a rule from a while back already. Or did they uh, December 1st. But I remember something like that from several years ago. Like it was anybody yeah, over well, 15,000. Yeah, this, this rule is really changing and making it hardcore. That you, yeah, you have yeah. to give overtime. Nobody can be exempt. Nobody, right. If it was six and a half times. If they were six and a half times the minimum wage, um, then you could exempt them, which was twenty-seven sixty-three an hour. Uh, but now it's uh, Sarah. Where's the cutoff now? I think it's nine hundred thirteen a week. Nine thirteen a week. So what does that break down to? So you know what's like interesting 46, about this 000. is forty-six thousand a year. It's forty. It's almost forty-seven thousand or something. Yeah, I remember it being around fifty thousand, and I thought that was put into place several years ago. Or... No, 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 no. So yeah. what's interesting this about takes, this? This takes out all the guesswork on. Oh, are they a, a manager? Or oh, they're right, right. They're admin, yeah. and, you know, they're at my admin assistant, so I can pay a salary. You that can was still the pay them salary, but you must track their overtime. Yeah, I mean, you must track the their hours. The the loophole was that if you were a manager, you were exempt regardless of your salary. You could be a twenty thousand dollar a year salary. Right. Manager, completely exempt. Um, and the employer basically owned you. You ha you would have to work however many hours you normally would work. Right. And, and it didn't matter. They didn't, nobody was tracking overtime. Nobody was tracking anything. Right, Sarah? Exactly. Okay. So this is bad news for our value pricing friends, our hardcore value pricing friends who swear that you shouldn't track time at all because you yeah. have to in order to be in compliance with this. Right. And, and legally, it's, you will have to track time. Oh, yeah. Good yeah. Now you could guarantee hours. You could say, look, I'll pay you a salary of whatever and, and guarantee them the hours, but you still have to be able to support they did not make overtime. Well, and what's interesting is you can um, you can also like tell your employees, hey, you you need approval to work more than eight hours a day or more than forty hours in the week. Right, and but if they do it anyway, they still have to do it anyway. It's right. They can do it. But hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me finish making my point because I know this. I, so yes, they can still do it anyway, and you're still required to pay them. However, you can then start to write them up for Absolutely. not yeah. following the rule, and you can write them up three times and fire them if they consistently don't listen. Right. That's the but way you hedge yourself against having to pay all the overtime. Right. Right. And and the nice thing these apps is the audit trail and covering your fan. Yep, exactly, sir. And that's what I was going to say is with a time tracking product like Clockshark, one of the nice things is that you're seeing all that stuff on a nightly or daily basis. You can log in at the end of the day and say, hey, this employee did over eight hours today. The paper timesheets, the old way, you were getting that at the end of the week or the end of the payroll period when it was too late to jump in and intervene. Right. Um, so. Right. Right. My camera keeps shutting off on me. It's very annoying. All right. Well, I, that's interesting information and uh, great stuff. Thank you, Cliff. Um, how does everybody Thanks reach you me. if they want to follow up with you and ask more questions? Yeah, Cliff at clockshark.com um, or just give me a call, 800-828-0689. I'd love to talk to you. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll Thanks see again, you all Seth. next week. Thank you. All right. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. It was great. You bet. <clears throat>